Hey everybody, this is NQ Productions here and welcome to another video. Now, the lore of Five Nights at Freddy's is extremely complex and one of the most difficult mysteries to solve is the timeline. Now, everyone has their own version of the FNAF timeline, whether that be the Game Theorist, the Leaderboard, Foot of a Fairy, or Noodlebot. Regardless of who makes the timeline, no matter what, it's going to be a tough challenge to create a timeline that not only makes sense, but stays true to the games, the books, and the other canon material of Five Nights at Freddy's. So, with all these different timelines that already exist, what's going to be different about mine? Well, I'll show you. In this video, I'm going to show you guys my version of the FNAF timeline so that you guys can see how I think the story of Five Nights at Freddy's goes. We'll be using elements from the games, a bit of elements from the books, and some of my own stuff to create a story that I feel like makes sense. Now, before we get started on today's video, I just want to let you guys know that I'm very aware that this timeline is not 100% accurate with the current lore of the series. This timeline is how I think the story is told. Everyone has their own version of the FNAF story and that's completely fine, so if you disagree with my timeline, that's okay. So, with all that said, this is my version of the Five Nights at Freddy's timeline. So our story begins in the small town of Hurricane Utah in 1980, and it involves two business partners, Henry Emily and William Afton. Now Henry and William aren't just business partners, they're also family men. Henry has a wife and a daughter named Charlotte, and William has a wife, two sons named Michael and Evan, and a daughter named Elizabeth. Anyways, Henry and William have recently opened a restaurant called Fred Bear's Family Diner. The restaurant becomes super popular due to the animatronic characters, Fred Bear and Bonnie, that Henry and William built in order to entertain the children that go to the restaurant. Now, let's talk more about those animatronics, shall we? Now, unlike your average animatronics, these were springlock animatronics, which use a mechanism that allowed people to fit into the animatronic suits. Sounds cool, right? Well, there's one major flaw to these suits, though. If the suits are exposed to too much moisture, then the spray locks on the suit will loosen, which will then cause the person in the suit to have, uh... Not so good time. But despite that massive safety hazard, Fred Bear's Family Diner continues to succeed, and after a few years, Henry and William decide to create the company that we all know and love, Fazbear Entertainment. With this new company, Henry and William open a new location called Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, which features new, non-Springlock animatronic characters. Freddy Fazbear, Bonnie the Bunny, Chica the Chicken, and Foxy the Pirate Fox. This restaurant becomes even more successful than Fredbear's Family Diner, and Henry and William continue to thrive with the Fazbear name. So let's fast forward to 1983. At this point in time, Fazbear Entertainment has turned Freddy Fazbear's into a multimedia empire with things like action figures, plushies, masks, and a TV show. There's also four Fazbear locations currently open as well. Fredbear's Family Diner, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, a second Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, which will be important to the story later, and Circus Baby's Pizza World. That last one is particularly interesting since this restaurant doesn't use the same animatronics as Freddy's. These are the Funtime animatronics. Not only are these animatronics themed to clowns and people rather than animals, but they also are more advanced and are programmed to do more than just entertain children. For example, Circus Baby has a mechanism in her chest that can dispense ice cream for children to enjoy. Neat! So, as you can see, Fazbear Entertainment has been very successful for William and Henry. However, things are about to take a nosedive real fast. On the opening day of Circus Baby's Pizza World, William's daughter, Elizabeth, wants to play with Circus Baby. She decides to walk up to her and things, unfortunately, don't go too well for Elizabeth. After her death, Circus Baby's Pizza World then gets shut down and closed for good on its first day. The Funtime animatronics are then buried underground into a facility that we will later see as Circus Baby's Entertainment and Rentals. Now it's a pretty big oof to lose Elizabeth, and you would hope that things would get better for the Afton family after they lose one of their children, but it unfortunately doesn't. William's youngest son Evan, aka the Crying Child, isn't having a great time right now. His brother Michael keeps on scaring him for fun, and this causes Evan to develop a massive fear of the animatronics at Freddy's, which is kind of a problem when your dad and his business partner own multiple restaurants with those same animatronics. What makes this even worse for Evan is that his birthday is coming soon, and his birthday party is being held at Fred Bear's Family Diner, where he'll be right next to the animatronics that he's afraid of. Jeez, can this kid ever get a break? 
Now at first you may be thinking, why would William host Evan's birthday party at a place that has animatronics he's afraid of? Well, William doesn't know that Michael's been scaring Evan, so because of that, William thinks Evan is perfectly fine with going to Fredbear's for his birthday. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. So with all that said, the day arrives, Evan's birthday party at Fredbear's Family Diner. And I think we all know how this goes. Michael and his three friends scare Evan with Freddy Fazbear masks and then they forcibly bring Evan towards the animatronics on stage. Then they take things way too far and push Evan into Fredbear's mouth and then... Was that the bite of 87? No 2015 Markiplier, that was the bite of 83. What? Evan then dies a few hours later in the hospital, and Fredbear's Family Diner gets closed down after the incident. Not only that, but the Springlock suits also get discontinued for being too hazardous, and they get stored away into Freddy Fazbear's Pizza's safe room, a secret room that is hidden from the cameras and invisible to the animatronics. So at this point, William has lost two of his children because of Fazbear Entertainment. He's nearing his breaking point, and it's at the point where if one more bad thing happens to him because of his animatronics or Fazbear Entertainment, he's going to lose it. Well, unfortunately, William's wife ends up divorcing with William since he focuses too much on Fazbear Entertainment and doesn't pay attention to his and her children. I mean, think about it. If William paid attention to his kids, he could have noticed that Micah was bullying Evan and maybe the birthday party wouldn't have happened at Fredbear's. But he didn't, and focused his mind more on Fazbear Entertainment rather than his family, which is why William's wife made the tough choice of leaving William in hopes of finding someone that will pay more attention to her family. After she leaves, William reaches his breaking point. He keeps on losing his children and loved ones to Fazbear Entertainment in some way, so he thinks that in order to make things right, he needs to take away children from Freddy's by killing them. I know, I know, it's not that great of a motivation, but it's the best that I can come up with. So, now that William has a reason to kill children, it's time to get to the part that everybody knows about at this point. On June 26, 1983, William dresses up in a sewed up costume with Spring Bonnie and lures five children into the back room of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Once inside the room, he commits the murder and stuffs the bodies of the dead children into the animatronic suits. Now, one of these children, Cassidy, will become a very important character, but not so much later, so we don't have to worry about her at the moment. Anyways, the incident causes Freddy Fazbear's Pizza to go under investigation, and the restaurant gets closed down for the meantime. But, due to the lack of evidence of the murder, the restaurant is back open. Although, not for very long, since the animatronics start to produce a foul odor due to the corpses of the children in the suits. Not long after this stinky discovery, the original Freddy Fazbear's Pizza gets shut down for health violations, which means there's only one Freddy Fazbear location open. The second Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, the FNAF 2 location. See, I told you it would come back. Now even though William is killing children, Henry has no idea his business partner is responsible for the crimes. But to keep his daughter Charlotte safe, he installs a security puppet in the FNAF 2 location that is meant to keep an eye on her. However, that doesn't stop William from luring her outside of the pizzeria dressed up in his costume again. But this time, Henry notices Charlotte and bolts outside to try and stop William from killing his daughter. But he's unfortunately too late and William kills Henry's daughter. Henry becomes furious and chases William, and then after an epic battle, Henry knocks out William, causing him to lose his costume head, revealing to Henry that William was responsible for the murders at Freddy's. William flees the scene, and then Henry reflects on how his business partner betrayed him, killed his daughter, and ruined Fazbear Entertainment. Not long after, the FNAF 2 location is shut down due to Charlotte's death. Now here is where things start to get spooky. At the same time that Henry and William were fighting, the security puppet that Henry created goes outside of the pizzeria to check on Charlie. It slowly approaches her, but the heavy rain during that night causes the puppet to short circuit and fall down on Charlie. But, the soul of Charlie then enters the puppet. That's right, Charlie's soul is now in the security puppet, and within her new body, she has a goal in mind. She's determined to find the other victims of William Afton and give their souls new life within the other animatronics just like she did. And that's what Charlie does in the Take Cake minigame from Five Nights at Freddy's 2. This means that the children that William killed in the Missing Children's incident now possess the original Freddy Fazbear's Pizza animatronics. But there is also another child that goes on to possess another animatronic. 
Remember Evan, aka the kid that died from the Bite of 83? Well, he goes on to possess Golden Freddy alongside Cassidy, one of the five missing children from the original incident. See, I told you guys she'd be an important character. Now, Cassidy, unlike Evan, is a vengeful spirit. She's mad at William Afton, and she wants to get her revenge on her killer. But that doesn't happen until way later, so let's move on. In fact, let's go to the year 1987. With no locations open, Fazbear Entertainment feels the need to forget the past murders and hit the big reset button. The FNAF 2 location is having a grand reopening, hoping to keep the Fazbear name alive with newly designed toy animatronics that have facial recognition software to prevent a child murder from ruining the fun. They've spent a small fortune on these new animatronics. Uh, facial recognition, advanced mobility, they even let them walk around during the day. <laughs> Isn't that neat? <clears throat> but most importantly, they're all tied into some kind of criminal database so they can detect a predator a mile away. But then, William jumps in and decides to ruin said fun and kills five more children at the pizzeria, causing the FNAF 2 location to go under investigation. Meanwhile, the souls of William's most recent victims possess the toy animatronics, causing them to become unusually aggressive towards adults, and yet they stay fine towards kids. Huh. Anyways, the FNAF 2 location is about to close, but they still got one more birthday party to host. But on the day of said birthday party, one of the toy animatronics decides to attack the daytime security guard, causing him to lose his frontal lobe in an event that became infamously known as the Bite of 87. The toy animatronics then get scrapped, and the FNAF 2 location closes its doors for good. But that doesn't stop Fazbear Entertainment from opening one more location in 1993. This is their last hoorah in order to keep their business alive. But since the Fazbear name has been associated with child murder for the past couple of years, nobody comes to this new restaurant, so it only opens for a few weeks before it closes its doors. Now, it's been a few months since the latest Freddy's restaurant closed its doors, and even though there are no more Fazbear locations for William Afton to visit, he has been doing something else behind the scenes. William has been experimenting with a material known as Remnant, which is a mixture of the souls of his victims and the metal of the animatronics, which is how he believes that the souls of his dead victims give the animatronics life. Since his daughter Elizabeth was killed by one of his Funtime animatronics many years ago, he thinks that he's able to harvest the remnant of Circus Baby and find a way to bring her back. Because of this, he orders his son Michael to go downstairs into the underground facility, Circus Baby's Entertainment and Rentals, to find her. Michael accepts his father's request and goes down into Circus Baby's Entertainment and Rentals to save his sister, and while he's doing that, William is killing more children in order to continue experimenting with Remnant. However, because of William's experiments, the souls of the children he most recently killed possess the Funtime animatronics, which means that Michael isn't going to be having the greatest time downstairs at Circus Baby's Entertainment and Rentals. The possessed Funtime animatronics dismantle themselves to create the mess of wires entered. Their plan is to escape to the surface, and by using their special mechanisms, they lure Michael Afton into the scuba room so that they can scoop out his internal organs and use Michael's body to escape the facility, which somehow ends up working. But then, Michael's body starts to decay, and after a little while, Ennard ejects himself out of Michael's body in hopes of finding a new host body. Oh yeah, and then Michael somehow survives all that. Nice. Now, let's go back to William Afton. He goes to the original Freddy Fazbear's Pizza to dismantle the original animatronics in order to harvest some more remnant. However, since the animatronics are dismantled, the souls of the murdered children are now released, so they chase William Afton and force him to hide in the safe room. But then, William notices the Springlock suits, so he bolts to the suits and gets inside one of the Springlock suits to protect himself from the spirits of his victims. However, since Freddy Fazbear's Pizza has been closed for a really long time, the building is kind of run down and rain is able to seep in. So, a drop of water lands on William's suit, causing the spring locks to fail, and crunch! Oh, oh god! <laughs> William suffers from a brutal death, and dies within the safe room. Now that William Afton is dead, the puppet organizes a birthday party for four of the five children from the missing children's incident, and Evan, aka the crying child, in case you forgot who Evan was. We see all this happen in the Happiest Day minigame. 
Charlie sets the souls of these five children free as we see the balloons fly into the heavens. But wait a minute, William Afton is actually still alive! Yep, somehow William survived getting springlocked in the springlock suit and ends up possessing the springlock animatronic, becoming the infamous character who always comes back, Springtrap. Now, William can't do much right now with Springtrap since he's stuck in the safe room, but don't worry, he gets set free 30 years later in 2023 when some guys are grabbing whatever they can find from the abandoned Freddy Fazbear's Pizza so that they can use it for a horror attraction based on the mysteries and stories of Freddy Fazbear's called Fazbear's Fright. Now, this attraction has nothing to do with Fazbear Entertainment. Even though that company is still around after all these years, they don't do much at this point in time. Anyways, the attraction opens and Michael Afton visits the location and becomes the security guard of the attraction. Eventually, he finds out that his dad is Springtrap, so in order to finish off his dad, he burns down Fazbear's Fright. Unfortunately, it doesn't work out, and Springtrap survives the flames. Then, out of nowhere, Henry Emily comes up with a plan to end the Fazbear legacy. He opens a new pizzeria, but rather than just being intended for the public, he uses this pizzeria in order to lure the remaining animatronics and set their souls free. Now, what's interesting is that the animatronics that remain have changed a little bit since we last saw them over 30 years ago. Circus Baby got booted out of the Ennard Club and became Scrap Baby, what was left of Ennard turned into Molten Freddy, the puppet is inside this new animatronic called Lefty thanks to Henry, and then there's Springtrap. Yeah, he didn't change that much. Anyways, Henry hires Michael Afton as an employee and tells him to bring all the animatronics into the pizzeria in order to finish off everyone once and for all. Everyone is incinerated, including Michael, and Henry then says his last words to Michael, the lost souls, his daughter, and his old business partner. And they all die within the flames of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Now, I would love to end the timeline here, but I want to mention two things that occur after the final fire. During Henry's last words, he said this. Although for one of you, the darkest pit of hell has opened to swallow you whole, so don't keep the devil waiting, friend. And Henry wasn't kidding. William Afton is now trapped in purgatory at the hands of Cassidy, the one he should not have killed, the vengeful spirit, and the only soul that has not passed on. Rather than moving on into the afterlife, she tortures William and forces him to suffer through a never-ending animatronic horror as we see in Ultimate Custom Night. Have fun, William! Now, the other thing I wanted to mention was that after Henry's fire, a small indie game developer that is not Scott Cawthon decides to create some video games based on the horrors from Freddy Fazbear's. I didn't expect FNAF to go meta on us, but whatever. The indie games become super popular, and Fazbear Entertainment is a little annoyed at the bad name that these indie games are giving them, so they create a VR game as a way to poke fun at themselves in their past, clear their name, and ultimately rebuild their brand. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of my Five Nights at Freddy's timeline. Now, before I end this video, I am aware that this timeline didn't include the main story of FNAF VR Help Wanted and the events of Security Breach. I didn't feel like including these games since the stories that FNAF VR Help Wanted and Security Breach tell, you know, with the whole glitch trap and brainwashing thing, just didn't fit with my version of the story, so that's why I decided to leave them out of my timeline. Anyways, with all of that out of the way, this brings us to the end of this video. So I really hope you guys enjoyed my timeline video since it took me forever to get done and I hope that the wait was worth it. If you guys enjoyed this video then don't forget to leave a like and if this is your first time here and you want to see more videos from me then make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on the next upload. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye guys.